I guess uh, one benefit, it's been like two weeks, so I don't remember which question I loaded the dice with. We'll see. Um, start. Okay. Uh, large Hadron Collider, right. Uh, it stands collide with uh, enough amount of energy, right. right, right. Lower beam, enter text sensors, okay. for each proton in the beam, find the number. So this is where um, knowledge of some of the dynamical quantities will be helpful. Let me just write some of those things down. So um, we have definition of beta as of V over C. Gamma in terms of beta is 1 over square root of 1 minus beta squared. And uh, you can uh, be write beta in terms of gamma. Beta in terms of gamma is square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. So uh, with that, some of the expressions, like for energy, the total relativistic energy is gamma mc squared. And total relativistic momentum for a massive particle is gamma mv. And the final expression that's sometimes useful, like if you ever want to find a quick expression for velocity, then the thing that will give that to you is PC divided by E. You can kind of look at this expression here, and then multiply this by C and divide by E. What I would get is gamma times cancel out, and I get V over C or beta. So, so that's what I have in my head. So in A, it's asking for the numerical value of gamma. And they've given us the beam energy. For A, they've given us the beam energy, by which I'm assuming that they mean um, the total energy, the kinetic plus rest energy of the proton beams. That's a 7 times 10 to the 12 uh, EV. So looking at this expression for energy, this is what I notice. It's got gamma in it. And everything else is constant. M is uh, constant, like you know, uh, rest uh, and and rest mass of the proton over which I am given, you know, ten to the nine eV per c squared. Um, then C that's constant. So if uh, I'm given energy and I want gamma, I can do it super quickly this way. I can say, oh, looking at this, I can say from one that gamma is equal to the total energy minus mc squared. So that would be 7 times 10 to the 12 eV divided by that approximate value of 10 to the 9 eV. I see some nice cancellations, which is why I do it this way. 7 times 10 to the 3 eV or 7,000 uh, eVs cancel out. So yeah, that's uh, uh, really simple. Uh, Gamma is equal to 7,000. And it says, uh, find the numerical value of V to at least uh, three significant figures. Oh, that's a mistake. V is equal to C, two or <laughs> three significant figures. Uh, this is what I mean. So let me use this formula to actually calculate it. I think I can um, do it this way. Let's, do I have time to waste? Uh, maybe. Um, you know, let me do it after. Uh, uh, Justify it after. Oh. <laughs> waste time without first knowing I have time to waste. Um, another source of high energy particles is cosmic rays. Where high energy uh, have been detected one mass. Why don't we use cosmic rays, right? The two con yeah yeah so uh, the, what it's uh, trying to say is um, you got two different uh, setups. There's uh, the collider configuration which is the LHC configuration. You have two particles that are coming in with more or less the equal energy towards each other. And um, the other would be um, stationary target picture, which is more appropriate with something like cosmic rays. Wait, not CMB. Uh, that's referring to something else. Uh, So in that case, uh, oh, I could remember. Uh, in that case, um, um, one target is stationary, 
and the other proton is coming in with some amount of energy that's going can be related to the other but uh, is going to be different so uh, with those pictures in mind it's asking let's correctly compare the physics of LH collisions uh, with the physics of cosmic ray collisions find the beam energy of LHC in the reference frame where one of the two colliding particles is at rest. Okay, so I think this is how I want to label it, and this is probably how I labeled it in the solution. I'm going to call this my frame S, and I'm going to call this my frame S prime, and this is the frame that you get if you imagine kind of a box around this, that's moving to right with the speed of v that we calculated above. So this frame is moving at the same speed that the rightward propagating proton is. Then in this reference frame, this is at rest. Uh, v prime is equal to zero. And this, uh, you know, with the energy eb prime, it's moving at some speed. Uh, well, V prime, that's still going to be approximately C, that doesn't give you a lot of information. So, so you have two, these two different, refer, different reference frames, and what you have to do is you have to do Lorentz transformation. To go from one frame to the other frame. And this is where you really need to use the fact that energy and momentum form four vectors. I covered this in lecture, which your textbook doesn't. <laughs> Energy, momentum, four vector. It, uh, I'm just going to write the time component and the x component. Nothing interesting happens in y and z. Uh, so this four vector, of which I'll write the first two components, looks like uh, the time component is energy divided by C, and the position component is the momentum. And uh, once you identify this as a four vector, this is the useful thing. It transforms under Lorentz transformation, like a coordinates do. So, um, so because it transforms under Lorentz transformation, like coordinates do. Uh, sorry, one second. I'm going to pause the recording for a bit. I just saw a call come in that might be important. I'm going to pause the recording, and then I will restart the recording in a bit. Um, recording in progress. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, it's going to... Am I going to run out of time? Uh, let's see. Um, if I run out of time, I might just go through this quickly. Sorry, I had to take care of it. Um, recording is resumed. Timer is run. I'm, I'm going to use Lorentz transformation so that it's... Uh, um, so, so let me actually do this relatively quickly because I think I'm going to run out of time. So um, what I need to say is that uh, energy and momentum in the S frame S prime is going to be the Lorentz transformed uh, quantities of the energy and momentum in the uh, frame S. And I have to be careful here. I'm really, so if I look at the rightward traveling particle, I'm gonna get something boring, you know, zero energy. So I need to be looking at this particle here so that I'll get this particle here with its energies. So uh, when I do this calculation, this is what it looks like. The, it's asking for what? Um, the work, uh, find the beam energy of the LHC where, yeah. So I'm looking for this quantity here, E prime. So it's going to be um, so E prime is equal to, I'm just going to do some of the algebra in my head. It'll be uh, gamma E and then minus gamma beta uh, PXC. And when I plug in the numbers, the energy will be uh, 7TEV. And when I plug in number for this, it's going to be minus 7 
TEV per C. So the, the whole entire set of numbers will be this. The gamma from previous was 7,000 times 7 TEV. That will already make the numbers large. And then my gamma here is uh, still 7,000. And then beta is more or less 1 because it's more or less the speed of light. And then this will now be minus 7 TeV per C times C, C is cancelled. So it's basically going to end up being 2 times, uh, 7 times 7, 49,000 TeV. Or uh, doing the calculation in my head, EV prime is... Um, 9.8 times 10 to the power of, uh, let's see, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 12. So 10 to the power of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 16 uh, EV. Yeah, good. Um, so, you know, you might have expected this times factor of 2 from 2 particles. And what's uh, quite surprising is just how much boost do you get from the relativistic factors. Okay, how much time do I have? Uh, five minutes. Uh, let's consider a different scenario. One of the friends off. <laughs> Am I gonna have, I, no, I not have time to finish that after I had to answer that call. Um, what is the maximum? Ah, okay, okay. So for C, this is the setup. Um, we have so one particle is at rest, and I know the uh, beam energy of the other incoming particle that's uh, still 7 TeV. So um, we have to let me give you a shortcut. So when it says, um, so what is the maximum mass such a particle can have? Really, what I'm looking for is when this collision occurs and there's some colliding thing, I'm asking, what is its mass? And it, more specifically, what is its invariant mass? And there's a really convenient formula that comes from the uh, the energy momentum relationship, which is that uh, invariant mass squared, see the fourth power, is given by, yeah, or, let me be careful with the factors of C. Or actually, let me not be careful, because this is how I would normally do it. Uh, M squared is equal to E squared minus P squared. So, I, in, the, in my lab frame, I have my total E is equal to the proton uh, rest energy, 1 GeV, plus the beam energy, 7,000 GeV, or 7 TeV. So it's basically 7,000 still. And momentum is now going to be uh, minus 7,000 GeV per C. So the invariant mass here, um, so I, I can plug in the numbers here. Let's see, uh, host calculator. Um, so E squared is going to be, that time, three minutes. E squared is going to be um, 7,001, um, times 10 to the power of uh, 12 electron volts squared minus um, 7,000. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's minus, but uh, 10 to the power of 12, uh, wait, GeV, giga, that's nine. Um, nine. Um, squared. So when you do this calculation, you get the answer of 1.6. Did I do something wrong? Um, if the... Uh, 
might have done something wrong. I'm in a hurry and I'm making mistakes. Um, Squared minus um, yeah. So I'm not going to be able to finish this in the time. So let me just uh, copy this off and uh, let's just uh, finish it up. Uh, uh, finishing it up after time. And uh, I think in trying to take a shortcut, I probably made a mistake. So. <laughs> um, use time dilation t is equal to gamma times tau. Um, so let's uh, start by first uh, correctly specifying the um, the time is the, the 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 energy momentum uh, four vector for that collision picture. So we have um, still the same picture momentum um, the, the energy of 1 GeV, it's at rest. And I have another particle that's coming in with energy of 7,000 GeV. And the momentum for this particle will be um, momentum will be basically um, it will be very close to 7,000 uh, GeV per C, um, but it might be that I can't uh, do that approximation. Um, let's see. So the energy momentum for vector E uh, B4 is going to be the, uh, the, the 1 GeV per um, C 0 plus 7,000 GeV per C, and then I think I can still use ultra relativistic approximation, which is to say this is minus 7,000 GeV um, per C. Then the total is uh, 7,001 GeV per C minus 7,000 GeV per C. And really the statement of conservation of energy is that this is still equal to energy after. And when you have this uh, energy after the, or you know, energy momentum four vector after the collision, um, the way you would calculate, so this is the term for E over C, and this is the term for momentum. The way you would calculate a mass is from that energy momentum relationship. The E is equal, E squared is equal to M squared C to the fourth power plus P squared C squared. And when you solve this for the invariant mass, you get M squared is equal to um, e squared over c to the fourth power minus p squared over um, c squared yeah, dividing through by c to the fourth to cancels yeah so the numbers you have here will be uh, let me see if I keep everything in giga electron volt unit I think um, uh, my final unit will be fine so my Initial energy is my energy is a seven thousand and one giga electron volt square that minus the momentum seven thousand or you know minus the seven thousand squared and what do I get? Oh yeah yeah I think that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I had trouble interpreting that number that I missed this power of 10. I think that's what that was. Yeah. So that's the rest energy. Now I can take the square root of that. That will give me in giga electron volt 
the that's the m squared. So when I take the square root, I'll get rest to mass. Yeah, yeah. So from that calculation here, what you have is m is equal to one one eight GeV. So that is the rest energy of the. Um, so this is the uh, max uh, rest energy of particle produced from 7,000 GeV beam. And you notice the difference. This is 118 out of 7,000. That's only uh, what percent? So only 1.7% of the original energy. So, so much of the energy still remains as a kinetic energy because the momentum had to be conserved. And um, so the second question was what? Uh, suppose that a verb has improved lifetime in the left. Right. Yeah, so how long does the particle live before decay? <laughs> so it, you have to calculate the gamma factor. And the easy way to calculate gamma factor here is now that you know the rest energy of the particle, you can go back to using the formula we used the way up in part A, which was that given that energy is given by gamma mc squared, whenever you need a gamma factor and you know the energy and mass, you can say gamma factor is E divided by mc squared. So here it's going to be 7001 GeV divided by 118 GeV um, and then I will be multiplied by c squared. So it will be 7001 divided by 118. So gamma factor of about uh, 59.3. So if the particles uh, re the the um, particle's proper time, uh, lifetime is 2 microseconds. It's a time dilated lifetime. will be that times this. So it'll be the time dilated lifetime would be about around uh, 120 microseconds. So yeah, so that's the answer. And I will do the calculation of times uh, after the session. Um, because um, I was on the phone for <laughs> that amount of time. I don't know if uh, uh, with all this, I actually did finish it before 20 minutes were up or not. And the, um, so that's the kind of how I would have ended it, except I had to answer a phone call. Uh, let me go back to uh, what I was doing in A there. Ah, yeah. V is equal to C, justify later. So um, this is how I was going to justify it. So I have this formula for beta in terms of gamma. Let me plug that into my calculator. So, uh, beta square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma, which is 7,000 squared. When I do this calculation, you will see that it is, um, I think it's easier to express it this way. Let me do 1 minus this. And it will give me the number in a scientific notation. In one part out of 10 to the 8, is how close it is to one. So if they say to at least the three significant figures, yeah, to at least the three significant figures, this number is one. <laughs> That's why V is equal to C is right. Uh, if they wanted a number different from one, either they had to say that they want a number different from one, or they have to give one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine significant figure specification so they will say that go down to you know eight nine where it rounds to zero so so you know it will have like eight nines and uh, yeah they didn't say that that's why this was fine and you know this is something called it's a uh, uh, this is under what's called uh, ultra relativistic regime um, let me just write it here so it, that's the region where gamma factor is so high, ultra relativistic, relativistic regime. That's where the gamma factor is so high that um, that you can just uh, um, um, you can just use this approximation v is equal to c. So let me attach all of this and then wrap up this session here.
So, uh, oh, let me ask the question, pose the question to uh, ChatGPT how well it does. We'll see. Um, oh, sorry, this is a little bit um, scatterbrained. Uh, I got distracted and then, uh, and then I got distracted about running out of time. So I don't think this is uh, necessarily the best presentation. Fortunately for you, uh, there's a solution that you can take a look at. So uh, that solution, I've had a, a lot of time to put into it, put into writing. So take a look at that. That hopefully answers anything that I've left out um, unsatisfactorily in this hurried uh, coverage. This is going to take a bit of editing work when we are done. Uh, let me say that this is... See. Yeah, so I don't think I made a mistake during the time limit here. I just uh, um, saw the well, number in calculator and quite didn't quite fully figure out, oh, I got to take the square root of that. And there's a, um, there's a power of 10 that's trailing that I forgot to um, notice. So. Um, all right, that's all. And then uh, let's see how well ChatGPT does with this question. I have a feeling that it won't do very well because uh, it's just simply it's, it, this is not the kind of question it does well in. It's modern physics. It takes a lot of calculation. Uh, so let me just start from here. Um, And uh, I hope we recognize that when I put this in, that's just the uh, preamble to the preamble to the question that I haven't actually asked a question. Oops. Um, yeah, well, let's pause that and then see what it does. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For each proton, find the numerical value of gamma. And we, as a fraction of C, uh, MP of is equal to 1 GB per C squared, or 10 to the 9 EB per C squared. Uh, so this would be a uh, can you calculate gamma? It's doing a lot more work than it needs to. Uh, but yeah, it got the correct gamma factor. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a correct answer. All right. Um let's see. As the highest, 10 to the 20 EV or equal to 10 to the 8 EV and minus Okay, I wonder if we don't recognize that I haven't asked a question yet. Uh, yeah. It's giving an answer, I didn't ask a question. Um, <laughs> let's ask the question. Um, yeah, I'm not evaluating its response because it, my position is that it shouldn't have responded at all. There was no question for it to answer. Uh, mirror total of, mirror total of 14 times 10 to the 12 EV of energy. The income energy of 10 to the 20 dB by shifting. Um, all right. Oh, why is it doing? Uh, it's doing Lorentz transform. Is it doing Lorentz transformation? I don't think it is. It's uh, totally than this brain is. Um, it's deciding, I think, uh, what is a correct formula, but I would ask you, where did you come up with that formula? Uh, wait, that's not the question. Um, 
No, it, did, it misunderstood the question. Yeah. Um, and then for the calculation it's doing, ah, it's making me doubt myself. So let's uh, uh, bring up the solution <laughs> so that I can see if uh, the thing that I calculated uh, under the stress of the time limit <laughs> is different from the more relaxed uh, solution I've written uh, when I was not under the time limit. I'm just uh, bringing it up uh, in my second window with uh, the instructor view so that I can actually do this. So... This the question, and that's the question, and um, yeah, I think I did it correctly. Ninety eight thousand TV, or yeah, nine point eight times ten to the uh, sixteen EV. Yeah, yeah. So I did it correctly. Uh, that is not correct. Uh, I can't quite tell where it made a mistake, but it's doing a bunch of work that I wouldn't do, just working correct to Unix. Um, yeah, so okay, it missed the B. Uh, now let's see if we get to C right. I have a suspicion that it won't. Uh, it's getting more kind of far afield, so. Still 70. Um. Yeah, it's just doing it totally differently. Um, if it's using quark masses, then it's uh, not doing it right. Seven G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it did, it did it wrong. Didn't get a correct answer, and I can double check <laughs> to make sure the answer I worked out after the time limit is the same one that's in the solution. Um, yeah, one one eight. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So yeah. I am surprised they even got part A right. Um, so it it's the rest. It's not quite doing it right because you know this is a quite um, specialized field. So it, it doesn't surprise me at all that a general uh, tool like ChatGPT wouldn't answer these um, hypothetical. Um, answer, answer these uh, highly specialized uh, questions well. Does it even get a get up right Oh, so I guess here, um, uh, well, that just simply cannot be right. It, um, so it's saying gamma factor is. Yeah, what, wherever it's getting the gamma factor, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. This is where it's kind of being loopy. I can't quite track what what it's doing. So, all right. I think that's it. Um, since so three minutes left, <laughs> plus the time I saw um, answering phone, uh, but I think it's fine. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I mean, you're all welcome to <laughs> play with the ChatGPT with the other textbook questions. I'm happy to give feedback on what you get. Let me know of any questions. I'll answer that. But in the meantime, uh, I gotta go write some emails. So I'll end the session here. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you joining to the end, and I will see you in lab next week. Bye.